with just this stuff and some hot water. I'm gonna try this little rabbit stamp. We can make remeltable resin molds. And push the rabbit in. Just remelt it and use it again and again and again. Right, we are back with an update video. We've had so many questions regarding this um, resin clay. Is it really a resin? I don't know. I mean, the listing says it is. I've Googled it. I've looked into it. Apparently, it is a form of resin. <laughs> There's lots of different variations of resin, even dating back to ancient times. What we are going to do today is experiment with making a mold from this stuff. And the good, the good thing is, once we've made the mold, if we no longer need it, we can reheat it and mold it into a different type of mold. There are gonna be lots more experiments with this stuff, but I think, I don't wanna cram everything into one video. I think if we can if we can make a mold with this, we can then move on. If you've got any other questions, pop it in the comments. And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna play around with this a lot more. I may touch on inlays, I'm not sure. If it works with making molds, there's there's no way this wouldn't work um, using it as an inlay. So, UV resin. I think UV resin is going to heat up too much. We're going to give it a try, but I think it's going to the temperature of the UV resin as it starts to cure, it generates quite a bit of heat, and this stuff melts at 90 degrees Celsius. I have to say that Celsius. A lot of people thought it was Fahrenheit, so they were worried and concerned about, you know, what if I went out in the sun? I mean, it does have to get quite hot to, to melt. So we're going to try it with UV resin first, and then we're going to try it with epoxy and see what happens. <laughs> so because I'm using UV resin, I'm going to use this small glass cabochon. The reason why I'm going small with UV resin is because the more resin there is, the more heat it's going to generate. And I really don't wanna really don't wanna mess this stuff up and kind of make a, a melting mess. I think I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna pop that in my hot water to soften up for a couple of minutes. As I mentioned, 90 degrees Celsius. And then I'm just gonna make sure this cabochon is completely Spotless. Well, as spotless as can be. It is an experiment. And you may be wondering why I'm using that stuff and not this stuff. This stuff sets really, really hard. And this bonds to pretty much anything. I don't think we're going to be able to make a mold with this. Um, I'm 99% sure it would be tricky. It would be tricky to to use that stuff. This is This is a lot more flexible. So I just retrieved that from the hot water. Just give that a dab. Let's see how soft it is. I want that completely dry though. Doesn't have to be perfect, guys. <laughs> Just gonna place that down, take my cabochon, like so, and just push it down. And then I'm just going to let that cool down. Now, you can chuck it in a, a bowl of cold water if you want to cool it down quicker. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to be patient, and that is a rare thing for me. <laughs> you may be wondering what that's doing up there. Loads of you saw the video for this. I'm With the epoxy version, I'm going to try and make a mould of this. Because then that way, if it works... I don't need to keep sanding it down by using the original mould, which is matte. We'll give it a bash. So I'm going to make the mould for the face now. Before we test that. I might not have enough here. I've just used two sticks of the, the green. We'll see. gonna push that onto the face hopefully to work out any bubbles 
and then just bring the sides up like so as long as it stands flat that's all I'm really really <laughs> really worried about I don't want it toppling over I think that would do we may be able to also somebody mentioned in the comment comments um, brush on UV resin and cure it to make like a shell I don't I really don't know this one should be ready to take out now super shiny right so whilst that's cooling down move that aside and let's test the UV resin going to be using the resin markers clear hard I think this is going to go bad I don't know it is all gonna depend on the depth of the UV resin being used and how much heat is going to generate so I don't know whether to try curing it on full power um, so it cures quicker and prevents any kind of interaction between the putty melting or clay melting and disrupting the the UV resin or whether I cure on a really low power this lamp goes down to six watts hoping that the the chemicals don't bounce around and cure and bond too fast which then generates the heat I don't know part of me wants to just boom straight at 48 watts and cure it hopefully quicker than what that stuff can melt so I think I'm gonna try that <laughs> and if it goes bad we can try the other option so let's crank that up to full power and we're going to put that on for 60 seconds so that has just finished the 60 second cycle I'm not going to attempt to demold this yet just in just in case the the clay is soft but we do need to know don't we uh, where's something could I prod it prod the bottom it feels softer so I'm going to let that cool down but I'm gonna leave it to cool down with the bottom facing up I think or should I just cool it down oh it doesn't matter you're overthinking Dan just let it cool down <laughs> okay let's see if this has worked this is what I mean about the flexibility of it. Behaves very much like a normal mold. It's got some some yuckiness on the front. But does that just wipe off? It's not as shiny as the glass cabochon. So I'd be interested to see if that comes off also with the epoxy. But it, it has worked. It has got some really nice shine to it. I mean, if need be, you could always spend some time sanding that. But I don't know. For a, for an inlay perspective, if we were to brush it afterwards to use it, what am I talking about? No, I'm talking about something separately. I'm, I'm talking about using this as an inlay. So what I'm wondering now is if I reheat that and use like a stamp, um, if I use a stamp and then cure some UV resin in it, I'm, I'm interested to see if that would work. But it, it has worked, but I wouldn't want to go any deeper than that. And it has left that. Like a, a film on the resin. 
gonna try this little rabbit stamp. Now, we know we can already put these in resin, but then it's not, it's not the right way round, if that makes sense. It will be in reverse when you peel it away, but I wanna see if I can, I've just remelted that same piece that we just made the cabochon with. Just gonna flatten that out a little bit and push the rabbit in. And then we're going to cure that with UV resin also. And just see if it picks up the, all of the, the, the ugh, I can't get my words out today, all of the details. Right, let's pop this one out and see if we've got a decent mould without any trapped bubbles. As always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. Very close, <laughs> very close with the nose. But we're gonna mix up some epoxy and just leave that to cure and see what we get. Now, if you do try this with epoxy, stick within the recommended curing depths, pouring depths for your epoxy, because again, it goes through the exothermic um, curing stage and that also generates heat. Um, the deeper your resin, you're at risk of something called a flash cure, which is just going to melt this stuff and it's just dodgy. Don't do it. <laughs> so stick within the correct pouring depths. Let's see if the rabbit has worked. I think I've trapped some bubbles in there. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? And I, I think you could even brush this with a mica powder. I'm just gonna keep it clear and just see what happens. But what I'm also thinking is if we were to use this stuff to do this stage and then used this stuff to push it in and then we can cut it out and use that as a like a backup stamp or an, or an inlay. Now I've mentioned it, I'm just gonna brush it with the gold and just see what happens. This is gold nail powder. It may not work. And I'm just gonna cover that with faint black UV resin with just some black mica powder, just to make the gold pop a bit more. And the only thing is we can't use um, any heat to get rid of any bubbles because that is going to melt the clay. Let's give that a cure. Before curing that, I am going to, I'm going to use the mirror just so it hopefully helps to cure the underside at the same time. And the moment of truth. Actually, I haven't waited for that to cool down. <laughs> right, now let's see. See, it's got a little bit shiny on the on the bottom. That is due to the heat from the UV resin. But I, I'm that clicking noise. That is the heating coming on. I do apologise. So the mold still looks the same. Have we just made almost an instant charm? <laughs> We have, it's got the detail. Okay, the gold's very overpowering, but it gives you an example of what you could do with it. And you could then put that into another piece of resin, I suppose. The gold has taken away some of the detail. You see that properly? It's pretty incredible. You could just trim those down and create charms. Little earrings, whatever you want. Love it. And I'm pretty sure we could just use that again. And it has lifted the gold. Some speckles there, I don't know if that is actually the glitter that's inside. I think it has actually left some of the gold there. Okay. My resin has been sitting to dig gas. I'm not really that fussed about the bubbles. Just gonna pour that in and wait for it to cure. Just out of interest, I used the same mold again for the little rabbit, but I just used clear 
and it still kept the detail. And I could you still use that again. <laughs> this stuff's amazing. <laughs> so if you're going to be using this for UV resin, I suggest using the clear. Um, just so the light can penetrate through. They sell this, the same company sell this in just the clear bars with no glitter, just clear. I'll pop the link for that in the description box below also. Okay, so did we get a shiny mold? I, there's going to be some imperfections just because I, I wasn't very precise with the way that I molded it around that face. But I do want to know if it's shiny or if it's kept its shape so it can be used again. And I want to see if it's left that film. It doesn't even matter if I break the mold because I could just pop it in hot water and use it again. But I do want to try and be careful. I can see some shine already. It has left, it has left that film. But this is the matte finish from that mold. This was the one that I sanded and glazed with UV resin. And this is, it's full of bubbles, I don't care. Again, it's imperfect. <laughs> but it has worked and it has got a really nice shine to it okay it has got that film on it I'm gonna try and see if that comes off with some alcohol I mean it I've cleaned it up it looks a little bit better it's not perfect but I think it's a hit to be honest with you I really really do so with, with, we can 100% create inlays with this, 100% because we know it's working with the resin. If you want to see that in a separate video, let me know in the comments. I'm sure we can make something pretty cool. We can make instant molds pretty much. And we've got the, I said rabbits, but I think they're hairs. But it is working absolutely brilliantly even with that bit of a film that's left. So yeah, as always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment if you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. We are flying through the 80,000s now. I think we're almost at 82K. So thank you very much to anyone who's new and I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.